prime focus of the night where we give viewers a look at the humanity behind the headlines. Tonight, we go to Jackson, Mississippi, where residents are still in a fight for clean water. A recent wave of federal funding came with a promise that help would be on the way, but it may take years to see real progress. In the meantime, the city's predominantly African-American population feels the impact of America's failing infrastructure each and every day. Our senior congressional correspondent, Rachel Scott, takes a look in her new series that follows the money of major federal aid programs and the people people in communities falling through the cracks. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Tomorrow. These fifth graders at Wilkins Elementary School should be in the classroom right now. Okay, you all be careful, boys. It's not time for recess. This is not a study break. In fact, these students were pulled out of class to help load donations of water off this pickup truck and into their elementary school. They're just 10 to 11 years old, carrying stacks of water half their size. Be careful, be careful, be careful. For much of the year, nothing from the faucets is safe to drink. The sound of plastic, a signal to students in nearby classrooms that today Wilkins will have access to safe drinking water. That's not always a guarantee. And what is your product? Good job, good job. Bro. Amy Stewart is teaching math to fourth graders in one of those nearby classrooms. We waste water. We do not waste water, it's too precious. On weeks where donations are low, Amy buys water for her students with money out of her own pocket. It just seems like we're forgotten. We're just forgotten right here. We've been following this school for over a year. Months ago, the water pressure was so low, students were forced to use porter potties outside. Principal Cheryl Brown helping kindergartners line up. There you go. I look at our younger students. All right, now you stay right here. All they know in a school is a school where they have had to go outside to porter potties. That's degrading. It's inhumane on all levels. And there's no way we can go back and redeem that time, no matter how hard we try. Should conditions like these be acceptable? for any student. No, indeed. No, indeed. The time spent waiting in line is time not spent in the classroom yeah. learning. On one of our visits, there was no water pressure at all. Not even those portable restrooms could work. And this district often has to switch to remote learning with little notice, leaving parents scrambling. The school is still without water, so we're doing virtual from home today. But the teachers here say they are determined to not let their students be defined by the circumstances. You all did such a great job today. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. If I give up, say forget it because of what's going on now. I will not fail them, not at all, not at all. They deserve it, a fair chance, they deserve it. See you, see you. What's happening at Wilkins is happening all across Jackson. More than 300 boil water notices have been issued in the last two years alone. That means entire weeks could go by without access to clean water from the city. No water pressure, no water. Right. We get up Christmas morning to open gifts. My wife wants to wash her face. And the biggest Christmas present we got was nothing out of our pipes. At town halls, hundreds of frustrated residents packing in, demanding answers. Why should we have to feel like we in a third world country? <laughs> but the water crisis in Jackson didn't happen overnight. There have been years of finger pointing. Local Democratic leaders say Republicans have left behind a capital city where over 80% of the residents are black and a quarter of the population lives below the poverty line. What I have done is challenge the leadership of the state in order to address the failure to fund Jackson over time. Republican leaders pushing back, denying those claims. The water struggles in Jackson were specific to the incompetence of this administration and this mayor. The EPA recently launched an investigation looking into whether state officials discriminated against Jackson on the basis of race. Reeves has denied ABC News's repeated requests for an interview, 
but we spoke to EPA Administrator Michael Regan. I know equity is so important for you and the EPA. Transparency, how critical is transparency? You know, in a city like Jackson, we're not only rebuilding the infrastructure, we were building our trust with the community. The community has to have trust in their government. And the problems in Jackson have led to a rare intervention by the Justice Department, a federal takeover of Jackson's water system. Nothing like starting a new job this way, huh? The man standing at the front answering questions during this town hall is Ted Hennepin, the third party manager appointed by a federal judge to try to find solutions. Hennepin has only been on the job for a few months, but the problems here in Jackson go back decades. A crumbling water plant in desperate need of repair. He tells me he hasn't even found all the problems yet. This is really a failed system from an infrastructure standpoint. How important is it to have someone who is a third party independent voice working think, on this? I think it's really important here because the politics are incredibly challenged. He took us inside the OB Curtis water treatment plant, giving our cameras exclusive access at the city's main water treatment facility. This is the start of what every Jackson resident wants. Clean, every day. safe <laughs> drinking water. And we've been really good at producing it, unfortunately. We've had these gaps where you can't keep the pressure up because the system's full of leaks, can't get all the production out of here because we're missing some critical parts. All those things contribute to these episodes where we've had these, these disasters. Emergency fixes are just about everywhere. This is a temporary setup because that pipe's crushed. And how long has this workaround been in place? As far as I know, it's been maybe eight, 10 years. When something goes wrong at the water plant, the impact will soon be felt by Jackson residents like Glenda Barner. I try not to think about it. I just, I get up and I walk in the bathroom when I first get up and I turn the water on. I say, oh, it's a good day. I've got good, you know, clean looking running water. And that's another thing, clean looking. Do you trust that I don't, the water is safe? No, I don't. I don't drink it. I don't. I have not drank Jackson City water in years. I always buy bottled water for me to drink. Still washing my cabbage grains. The grandmother of seven often has to prepare meals for her entire family, just using bottled water. She can go through three cases of water on just one meal. We shouldn't have to go through this. We really shouldn't. But, you know, what can we do? We rely on our officials to do what they need to do to fix it and it's not getting done. Amen. The Biden administration awarded billions in funding for more than 7,000 road, bridge, and clean water projects across the country. Never again can we allow what happened in Flint, Michigan, and Jackson, Mississippi. Can never let it happen again. Mississippi received $429 million to address water infrastructure directly. We asked the mayor for an update. None of the money has been allocated at this time, uh, and the uh, application process has not been released by the state. But there was an application process. ABC News has learned leaders in Jackson did not apply for any funding from the bipartisan infrastructure law passed last year, and only recently applied in 2023. You depend on your city, your federal, and your state government to help you in times like this, but they're having infighting over the politics of it. You know, they say they're allocating money. Where's the money? Who's spending the money? What's the money being spent on? The state is now expected to submit a plan to the EPA for how that money will be spent, mandating that nearly 50% go to disadvantaged communities like Jackson. But you also have uh, an EPA administrator that has the ability to hold all parties accountable if they don't cooperate to ensure that we find a solution for the people of Jackson. Even without the money from the bipartisan infrastructure bill, the city of Jackson is still receiving more than $800 million of federal funds. Some of that from EPA grants, the American Rescue Plan and Congress. Hennepin is in charge of figuring out where that goes. In a newly released financial plan obtained by ABC News, Hennepin lays out how he intends to fix the city's water distribution system and address leaks. Investments that could make Jackson's water system financially self-sustainable. But it will take time. The plan spans 20 years, though some improvements will be seen in the first five. What do you tell residents when you hear from them about their frustrations, um, especially those that are losing patience? Tom, I still I can't do it any faster than we're doing. I think we've got the best 
tool in place now with the resources to make it happen. So a little bit more patience, maybe, which is hard to ask. Um, they, they've suffered. It's been terrible. Residents are where they have been for years, waiting for something to change, still keeping hope that one day avoiding tap water will not be a way of life. You know, this is bipartisan. This is black, white, red, yellow, Democrat, Republican. You know, it's not about me, it's not about you. It's about people having clean drinking water. Clean drinking water just seems like it would be the bare minimum. Rachel Scott joins us now. Some powerful words there from that Jackson resident feeling these problems firsthand. So Rachel, this is gonna be an ongoing series. Explain what your focus is on going forward. Yeah, Lindsay, well, so often you know this, we cover the negotiations about how bills and legislation gets made. But this focus on, on what comes after that. What happens after these bills are passed? Where does the trillions of dollars in spending go? And so we're really looking for some sort of accountability here. And oftentimes, there are communities that fall through the cracks, where the funding does not reach the communities that desperately need it. So in the next episode, we'll actually be focusing on COVID relief and the of epic proportions that the Justice Department is investigating. We always remember those PPP loans that were meant to help some of the small businesses out there. Well, it turns out some small businesses were actually shut out of that funding because other Americans took advantage of it and they used that funding and they used fraud to buy homes and engagement rings and cars. So we'll be digging a little bit more into that in our next episode of Through the Cracks, Lindsay. All right, Rachel Scott from our nation's capital. Thanks so much. We look forward to seeing what you have coming up. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.